If your team got guaranteed money, tell them call me. Whoop. Make me say ma, ma, ma. I done been around the world. Yeah, I was made for this. Player performance with J.A. Cavalier. What up, DJs? Back again on my crack to them. I am J.A. Cavalier, your favorite capper's favorite capper. This right here is player performance, NFL Week 2, the biggest overreaction week of the NFL season. Last week on the show, all free picks and leans, 7-4. and four. Best bet, of course, cash with the Jaguars, plus 3.5. Um, before we get started, do us a favor, smash that like button. Appreciation always appreciated. If you're new to the show, welcome. Now subscribe. Winners of last week uh, giveaway, the gift card giveaway, that's going to be Jeff Sprayer Rurr, 2471. I obviously didn't say that right. We'll, prop, we'll post it in the link uh, description below. But step up. You're the winner of a $200 Amazon gift card. You want to play it simple. Like, subscribe, drop a comment. Best comment wins a $200 Amazon gift card. Every week we're doing this. It's delivered via email from the good folks here at Why Lose. That's right, wildlose.com, free pick stats, trends, scores, odds, and more. If you like a game, drop it in the comments. Let us know. Help out the community. Win or lose, we ride together. A lot going on this week. Coach Rick, prop master Luke Shuey. We'll get to NFL Week 2 in just a sec. First, let's recap Week 1 with Tessa Hall. Back it up. One more time. All right, let's see that again. NFL Week 1 recap. It's likely that the Ravens aren't over their loss to the Chiefs. They weren't worthy. Philly didn't show any love to Jordan. Packers are screwed with Malik Willis. Time to relegate the Panthers. Bryce Young is already looking at his real estate license. Remember how the Giants let Saquon walk? Their GM can walk to the unemployment line soon. Joe Burrow without two elite receivers is like Jacoby Brissett. Oh wait, one of them won. Kirk Cousins is washed, Justin Fields still not good, 18-10 win was predictable. CJ Stroud at Richardson, book it as one of the more fun QB battles, round one to Stroud. The Cards forgot they drafted Marvin Harrison, but remembered how to lose. Will Levis is still on his knees as Caleb Williams acts as if he just won an MVP. Tyreek Hill was handcuffed before the game, Jags couldn't figure out how to handcuff him during it. So Bo Nix is average? Don't tell Sean Payton that, as he continues to compare him to Mahomes. Jim Harbaugh has arrived. Turns out Brandon Staley was just a really bad coach. Deshaun Watson is going to beg the NFL to allow him a massage after his worst performance ever. Baker watched too much of the Bear this summer. He cooked the Commanders. Matt Stafford returns to Detroit and immediately loses. That feels nostalgic. Aaron Rodgers might quit by week four to become a drug dealer if the Jets look like that all season. Thank you, Tessa. Welcome back. Now, I have to address this. There's rumors going around social media that I had something to do with Tyreek being pulled over. True, I was on the Jaguars plus three and a half. So any inconvenience for Tyreek is very convenient for me. But no, Tyreek is the reason Tyreek got pulled over. I had nothing to do with it, and I don't play fantasy football. My fantasy team would be more like Summer Rae, Yannette Garcia, Abella Danger. Oh, wait, isn't that the girl that died, or is that fake news? Burns, you looked that up. Fake news. You are fake news, sir. I, I thought I had to reshuffle my top five. Well, my fantasy isn't sitting in a basement with a bunch of dudes drafting players for some fictitious team. Real games, real money. Now, I do have a play in this game tonight. Buffalo Bills, Miami Dolphins. We record this late Wednesday, early Thursday. So don't know if the video will be out by then. I will post it on social media. But take the over. Over 46, 47, 48 and a half. I don't care. This game will get into the 50s. And the reasoning is pretty simple. Tyreek is going to be speeding up the sideline. Buffalo doesn't really have a counter. Someone to stop him, someone to clamp him down. You know, someone to really put the cuffs on, throw him down to the ground. <laughs> no, but really, I do like the over in this game. Um, to chime in the chat, let me know what you think. Tyreek, the situation, was Tyreek right? Was Tyreek wrong? My opinion, it just sucks that anytime you hear about police, it's going to be negative. There's a lot of good cops on the job. And I'm not saying what happened on Sunday was bad police. Excessive, maybe, especially knowing who he is, where he was going. But dude, you're speeding. A cop pulls you over. He comes up to your window, knocks on your window, and you treat him like he's a bum asking for change. Roll down your window, and I'm not talking about an inch. That's crazy. Those from SoFlo understand exactly what I'm talking about. Every red light you stop at, 
Homeless dudes come up with a cardboard sign asking for loose change. Next time they come up to your car, simply tell them, you want to make money, tune into player performance. NFL Week 2, let's go. Saints versus Cowboys. How about them Cowboys laying six and a half, total at 45 and a half. And I don't know what they're drinking in Vegas, but I'll take three shots of those. Lay the number with Dallas. Saints are getting all of this love for blowing out Carolina. Carolina sucks. It's not that the Saints are good. Mind you, this is still a Derek Carr-led football team. And he's leading them into Big D, where Dallas is 16-1 and last 17. He has to face this Dallas defense, the best defense in the NFL. Yes, I said it. I own it. I stand on it. The Cowboys have the best defense in the NFL. Last week, just gross. Filthy. Two picks, six sacks, 14 points. Allowed 93 yards rushing. Kamara couldn't hit 100 in a 47-point blowout. Cowboys laying six and a half. Give the big. Buccaneers versus Lions. Detroit playing seven. The total here is at 51 and a half. And it almost seems silly and a waste of time to read off the lines because you guys know what time it is. It's David Montgomery time. This is the first bet I make every week. Two dimes every Tuesday before morning coffee. And I have no reason to stop now. Not until the books juiced this to 170 or 200. Took overtime to cash for us on Sunday night. But it doesn't matter. It's like Novocaine. Give it time, it'll work. Completely unstoppable in OT. 45 yards on that final drive. If you watched the game live, you knew that dude was bullying himself into the end zone. Won't be any different here versus Tampa. Four defensive backs out. They gave up three rushing scores last week. I only need one. But you want to go D-Gen on them? Multiple at plus 400? Not a bad look. Get greedy, young man. Ride it, Montgomery, anytime. Touchdown. Colts versus Packers. Indianapolis laying anywhere from three to three and a half, total at 41. Week two, and now the Packers will be playing their first American football game in America. Now, Roger Goodell gets a lot of things right, but this wasn't one of them. Carnival, soccer, Christ of Redeem, you know that statue that sits on top of the hill. Beaches, beautiful women, Brazilian thongs, Picanha, Rodizio Steakhouses. Of course, oh, waxes. Yeah. These are the reasons we love Brazil. Oh, I can't leave her out. My stepmother, love her and those little cheese ball things that she makes. We love you, Brazil. But one look at that field, the game should have been called. You call games for lightning in the area. Chances of being struck by lightning minuscule. That field, those conditions, an absolute certainty. And it wasn't just Jordan Love. Players were slipping all night long, but the Packers did pay the ultimate price. Jordan Love, MCL sprain. Malik Willis now gets the start. In his longest stretch of games, which was eight, his QBR was 13, averaging four and a half yards per pass, completing 52% of his passes, which actually, by the way, is still higher than Caleb Williams. I wanted to get that out there just so you guys know. Um, I wanted to get to the Colts in this way, in this game, but Originators banged this up early. I'm not trusting Richardson to go on the road and cover more than a field goal. I will fade Willis. Malik Willis is going to be doing door dash with Desmond Ritter next week. No shot Green Bay puts up 19. Packers team total under 18 and a half. Jets versus Titans. Jets are laying three and a half. The total here is at 41. Now, I actually listened to an idiot on a podcast earlier this week. Said that you had to play the Titans, the Titans number. Everyone's going to be on the Jets. Look, I would take New York at any number. Will Levis is a bum, certified bum. I still have a nasty taste in my mouth for the shit I had to eat on social media. I've never been so right on a losing ticket. Dude got shut out in the second half through the worst pick six I've ever seen. The more I watch that clip, the more pissed off I get. Up one fourth quarter, three bears closing in. On your way down, flicks it up. What are you doing? Take the sack, eat the ball, play defense. 32 attempts for 127 passing yards. That's not going to get it done. Adam Rodgers gets his first dub as a Jet. He gets there by margin. Titans are not playing a rookie quarterback getting his first NFL start this week. They see Aaron. Now, I was on the Niners Monday night. That was just a terrible spot for Aaron. First game back in over a year. You need to get hit. You need to feel contact. Practice doesn't replicate game speed. But now he has that one under his belt. His discount. 
double check Bell. Aaron Rodgers off of a loss. There isn't even a conversation. I get the better team, the better quarterback, the better defense, the better coach. Okay, not so much the better coach, but I get my money back. That Levis fucked me out of last week with a flick of the wrist. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. 49ers against Vikings. 49ers are laying six. The total here is at 45 and a half. We swept the board on Monday night. Five dimes, Niners. Five dimes over. Two dime, two leg SGP. Debo anytime touchdown. Debo over rushing yards. So the CMC was listed out. All that did was open up opportunity. All of Debo's rushing props became live. Swing away, and I did. Mason went off. Didn't see that coming. 147 yards, five a carry. Purdy practically had the night off. Ayuk just two catches. Kittle had four. Just cashing his receptions prop. And they still scored 32 points. I said it was a great spot for the Niners. Despite all of the cool kids coming in heavy on the Jets. Now this is actually a better spot for San Fran. And the cool kids once again are coming in on Minnesota. Minnesota comes into this game fat and happy. They just beat a bad football team in the New York Giants. And this is a revenge game. The Vikings beat the Niners on national television last season. Five and one last uh, six games on the road. That one L to these Vikings. Now I know that because I was on skull as they embarrassed the Niners on Monday night last week. Purdy and McCaffrey were awful. I do expect both to be better. And even if CMC doesn't go, I don't care. Expect Get back. I'm on the Niners. Now, I mentioned all those player props because someone else has something they have to say. What's up, J.A. Cavalier? Of course I have something to say. I'm the prop master. We're locked and loaded, just like last week when we dished out a winner here. It was Lad McConkey of the Chargers going over 34 and a half receiving yards. We look to get another dub for you guys this week, and we're looking at Vikings quarterback Sam Darnold. His passing line sits at 229 and a half yards when he faces the Niners. Where do you think I'm going here? It's got to be the under and the under big time. There's, here's a couple things. First off, it's freaking Sam Darnold. The former third overall pick has proven many seasons with the Jets and Panthers, not necessarily the cream of the crop, that he's not who you want as your starting quarterback in the National Football League. Last week, he threw for 208 yards, so below this line, in a blowout win against the Giants. And yeah, he was a little bit efficient, but the box score tells us a story. He was able to find his top two targets, Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison. But outside of that, guess what? One single target to another wideout. They were essentially non-existent. Their receiving core is lacking big time, and he's without tight end TJ Hawkinson. I mean, where is Darnold supposed to go with the football against this Niners defense? And we know that defensive coordinator Nick Sorensen is not going to let Darnold beat him by going to Justin Jefferson. They're going to lock him down. And one last thing, we just saw on Monday night that San Francisco held one of the best to ever do it, Aaron Rodgers, to 167 passing yards. You think they're going to give up 230-plus to Darnold in Minnesota? Not a chance. Take the under here. Seahawks versus Patriots. So the Seahawks are laying three. The total here is at 38. This one opened up at 41, already dropped to 38. I certainly co-signed the movement. Two new head coaches, both defensive guys, and it does show. Geno Smith and Jacoby Brissett combined for 292 yards passing last week. Come on, stats mushed together. So to get an idea of just how bad that is in the NFL as we know it today, Mahomes threw for 291, and a slew of other guys threw for more than that. Patriots dead last in scoring last year. Nothing has changed. A whopping 16 points last week. 25th in yards per play. Against a bad Bengals defense. Expect a lot of Stevenson, a lot of Kenneth Walker for Seattle. Expect a lot of unwatchable football. Expect nothing. Give me the under. Giants versus Commanders. Washington's laying one. The total here is at 44. Jaden Daniels, of course, decent in his first start. Grant did most of those game late, 184 through the air, another 88 on the ground. The issue is going to be on the defensive side. They gave up 37 points. Check out the numbers from last week. 26 in yards allowed, fourth most passing yards, second highest QBR allowed. But, Jay, this week they get Daniel Jones. And I get it. But as shitty as Daniel Jones is, he should actually be decent in this game. 
Brian Dable is actually 4-0 ATS against Washington. Giants have averaged over 20 points in those games. Dable also 13-5 ATS after a loss. So if there's any Giants spot, and listen, I don't know that there is, and I'm definitely not saying so now, but if there is, this would be it. I can't commit to the G-Men. I will commit to points. Both teams should be able to score. The defenses gave up a combined 65 points last week. Total has moved up two and a half points for some reason, and some of my money may or may not be sprinkled in there, but give me the over 44. Chargers versus Panthers. Chargers will be all laying six and a half. This, of course, will get up to seven. The total is at 39, and there really isn't a number that's low enough to keep me off the under in this spot. Bryce Young is 2-15 and 15 as a starter in the NFL. That's not very good. You know what else isn't good? The Panthers offense, the Panthers defense, the coaching staff, and anyone who disagrees with me. Carolina scored 10 points last week, right? But what's funny about that is it's actually an improvement. Those are the only 10 points that they've scored in Bryce Young's last three games. The Panthers have not reached 14 points in eight of their last 10 games. Bryce Young is trash, and somehow their run game is worse. So it's easy. Lay a touchdown, right? No. As I stated all offseason, forget what you think you know about the Chargers. This isn't them. It's not the same team. Herbert's not going to go out there throwing the ball all over the field. Coach Khaki Pants is going to run the ball and play defense. Hardball equals under. We hit the under in the Chargers Raiders game last week. We hit the Panthers team total under. We do it again here this week. We hit the under in this spot. Slower pace, fewer points scored, fewer scoring opportunities. Enough said. Browns versus Jaguars. Jacksonville is laying three. The total here is at 41 and a half. Well, when everyone starts chanting for Jameis Winston, you know there's an issue. Deshaun Watson is ass. Since signing his five-year contract, by the way, $230 million contract, yeah, he's worth every fucking cent. He's played in exactly 13 games, 17 touchdowns, 78 QBR. Watson, 45 attempts for 160 yards last week, sacked six times, picked off twice, 0 for 10 on throws of 15 plus. He's not going to magically get better, not in week two. Since entering the league, He's 3-7 and seven both straight up and against the spread in the first two weeks of the season. So he typically starts slow, then he ends up playing okay through the middle of the season. Then he gets hurt and the season's over, wash, rinse, repeat. Trevor and the Jaguars, however, they get out the gate and they get out the gate quick. Last six games in September, 4-2 and two against the spread. Jacksonville also 4-1 and one ATS. Last five against Cleveland. Let's make it five of the last six. Back Trevor, fade to Sean, Jaguars minus the three. Raiders versus Ravens. Ravens are laying nine and a half. The total here is at 41 and a half. Bernsey, please don't fall. We cast with the Raiders under last week. Looking to cast with the under again here in this spot. What do you think? The Marcus is some great mystery beyond the realm of human understanding. Total has dropped two points since open. Last week, Key fought down, charges territory. Antonio Pierce punting. Head coach doesn't trust his offense, doesn't trust his quarterback, doesn't trust his old line to pick up one fucking yard. Didn't you see the signs? I saw the signs. And all signs point to the under. Sometimes it really is that simple. Baltimore may be lacking an identity offensively. But they got some dogs on D. Take away those worthy catches, and they held Kansas City in check. Matter of fact, last five games against teams and quarterbacks not named Mahomes, none have reached 20 points. I don't expect the Raiders to either. Not like us. They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. Rams versus Cardinals. I was known as laying one and a half. The total here is at 49 and a half. I like the Rams in this spot. My only concern would be Nakua. That is a concern. So I'm not going to uh, take the one and a half. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play it in the two-team teaser, six to seven-point teaser, get them up over key football numbers. The Rams have won eight of the last nine straight up, eight of the last ten, excuse me, straight up. Won and covered both games last year, and both games were by double digits. And we all know Sean McVay, owns the division. 27-17-1 against the spread. And against the Cardinals, he's 12-2-1 ATS. 
There's points to be had against L.A. as well, so I think the Cardinals are going to play true to form. And what's true to form for the Cardinals? They score and they give up points in bunches. With Nakua out, Nakua or not, the Rams have plenty of weapons. I just like saying Nakua. I trust Matthew Stafford to keep this one close, so I'm teasing this number. Front end of a two-team teaser, I'm getting the Rams up and over seven. No-brainer, Rams plus seven and a half. Steelers versus Broncos. All right, the Steelers are laying three. The total here is at 36 and a half. I want no part of this game myself. One coach does have terrible numbers as a road chalk. Tomlin like 40, 44% as a road favorite. But one coach travels well. Is that why lose very own Coach Rick Bowe? Yes, now, <laughs> Coach, I'm going to bring you in for this game. You can tell me who you like. You're going to tell me why you like them. Um, I'm going to play this one, and I'm going to tell you for $200. If this game wins, Nestor Ramirez, 32.52, is going to win a $200 Amazon gift card. That's Nestor Ramirez, 32.52. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to play this for a little bit of pizza money to $200. If this game cashes, Nestor Ramirez wins a $200 Amazon gift card. No pressure at all, coach. Hey. Nestor the molester, right now, 200 bucks. He's got it. I'm telling you, look, I know Nancy you don't. Nestor Ramirez. I, I, know, I know you don't like this one, but Pittsburgh minus three. I like it. Here's why. Bo Nix, a.k.a. Bo Picks, 26 out of 42, something like that last week. A buck 38. Throws for 138 yards on 42 attempts. Throws two picks. And he's Denver's leading rusher. Okay, that ought to tell you a little bit about the Denver running game. Pittsburgh's defense is for real, and it's going to have to be because they, they're not going to score, right? So Mike Tomlin fires up the defense. They hold Atlanta to 226 total yards last week. You know, Atlanta was supposed to be the second coming of something with, you know, Kirk Cousins and all these weapons. They hold them to 226. Uh Mike Tomlin versus a rookie quarterback. I'm going to lean towards Tomlin. And think about this with the spread at, at three. You know, we're expecting probably a close game. I'm going to, I'm going to say it's probably a one-score game. And Tomlin in one-score games since 2020, 32 and 11 straight up, 30 and 13 against the spread. Nestor, cash 200 bucks right now, buddy. Pittsburgh minus three. There you have it, the Pittsburgh. There you have it from the our very own coach, Coach Rick Bow. Um, Pittsburgh Steelers Lane Three. Nasty Nesta Ramirez thirty two fifty two. If the Steelers win, you win a two hundred dollar Amazon gift card. So now the elephant in the room. Coach went on the college show talking a little bit of trash, right? So I didn't say anything. Kept my mouth shut. He beat me uh, in 1v1 on the first game, a college game. Junior circuit. Junior circuit. It's all right. Let's get up, graduate okay. now to pro ball, right? Oh, yeah. So we go head to head on Monday night. Coach likes the under. Most of the people, most, most big guys did. I get it. Not this guy. I think the 49ers were going to scoop, hit this over pretty much by themselves. Coach, you got owned on Monday night football. By the boss man himself, J.A. Cavalier. Coach, oh, no, I'm, boy. I'm everybody's favorite capper. I'm your favorite capper. Just own it. I mean, you know, you're my favorite capper, but, you know, every now and then, like, even the blind squirrel can find that nut, right? <laughs> you know? So, hey, I, no, 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 you know, no. I'll give this you credit. Though. Is I'll give you credit. Nuts on it's Sunday. a great pick. It's a great pick. <laughs> you know, we're all on the under, and, you know, you just happen to, I don't know. Uh, maybe you hit your head or something. I don't know. Were you drunk or something? I don't know, but I'll give you credit. It's well, a good I, pick. I'm usually drunk. Well, I'm, <laughs> at least, listen, uh, on, a Monday, on a Monday night game time, I'm typically drunk, yes. yes. But was I drunk when I made the pick? No. I'm always yeah. clear-headed when I'm putting these games in, when I'm putting the pen to paper, when I'm dotting I's and crossing T's. Always sober. Now, good. by game time, that's another story. But, Coach, you got to own, just own it. Listen, you're I not did. the first. You're certainly not going to be the last. 
I'm gonna be fading. I'm gonna be listen. I'm gonna be fading sharps all weekend. These guys are coming in just trying to be contrarian. I don't understand. They're trying to find angles that don't exist. And the truth of the matter is, is I'm gonna have to own them once again. If you want to go against me again, you know we can talk about that too. I'll, I'll own you there as well. But coach, you're still my favorite clients capper. every week. You're gonna continue to do so. Absolutely. And that's really all that matters, right? Yep. Why lose when you can win? Now blow the whistle. Get this old man fucking out of here. Let's Peace. go. We have more games to break down. Rick, I love you. Love you too, brother. <laughs> See you, man. Bengals versus Chiefs. The Chiefs are laying six. The total here is at 47 and a half. And here it is, the game of the week. And it's also my best bet. 1-0 to start the season. Best bet last week, cash with the Jacksonville Jaguars. In the history of the show, best bets have hit it like a ridiculous rate. That's like 70-plus percent or so. Best bet today, and we're rocking with... That's right, $99 one week. Um, we're rocking with the Bengals. We're taking the points. The Bengals plus the six. Sprinkle on the money line. And it isn't that I hate Mahomes. I like Kermit until he opens up his mouth. And I don't hate Taylor either. I'm not a fan, but certainly don't hate her. I'm actually indifferent. Swifties don't give a shit about football. And sports bettors don't give a shit about Taylor Swift. Or who she's fucking banging. Yes, Burrow started off the season slow. But he typically does. But what does Burrow do? He bounces back. He shakes it off. 14-6-1 after a loss. 10-3 against the spread on the road after a loss. He is also 3-1 straight up in ATS against Mahomes. And as a dog of three or more points, Burrow is 15-2 against the spread. Don't be fooled by KC's defense. It's suspect at best. Piss poor in week one. They gave up 452 yards to Baltimore and Lamar. And Lamar couldn't hit a wide open receiver. This is a huge overreaction. Give me the Bengals. You may not want the points. You're probably not going to need the points, but take the free points. Take the six. Best bet, Bengals lay, uh, excuse me, catching six. And I might play some alternate lines away a little bit as well. That's right. We're doing the dance. We're shaking it off. Bears versus Texans. So Houston's laying six and a half. Total is at 45 and a half. Look, I'm on Houston, and that's just for fucking principle alone. I'm taking a stand, and I'll die on this hill. I do suggest letting me die on this hill solo, so probably don't tell me on this game. I'm still bitter. I'm still not done bitching about Levis. It's not the loss, man. I'll eat the L. I'm on like a 10-1-1 NFL run, up 100K to start the season. I'm going to take losses, so it's not the loss. It's more so how I lost. Tiny were a two-dying play, small play for me. But it cost me a perfect Sunday, clean sheet. And you want to know what? I got robbed. I want my money back. It's not fucking fair. But seriously, I am on the Texans in this spot, and I am laying the six and a half. Kalen Williams completed, like, what, 48% of his passes, 93 yards passing. Wasn't very good. Neither was the ground game. 84 total rushing yards. All the Bears hype, that's going to end by week five. And we can go back to business as usual. And business as usual is Houston doing what Houston does. Second in total yards, 15 yards per rush, 16 completion percentage, Texas size ass whooping coming. Give me the Texans, lay the six and a half. J.A. Cavaliers Pro Football Triple Crown. Three NFL games for this Sunday. Three straight, three two-team parlays, one week, $99. His pro football triple crown must go 3-0 and or the entire NFL season is free. J.A. Cavaliers pro football triple crown. Link in the description below. Click the link now and jump on the money train. That's right, get to YNews.com. That's the letter Y, L-O-S-E.com. Free picks, stats, trends, scores, odds, and more. That's YLose.com. For a link in the description below. Yeah, Birdsy. Link the description below. He said. <laughs> YLose.com. Now, guys, this has been NFL Week 2. We'll be back here next week as we break down NFL Week 3, giving you all the information needed to beat the books. We'll also recap Week 2. But until then, listen, yesterday's a memory. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Grab the people you love the most. Hold them close. Today you're here. You're alive. Let's make it count. Something's got a 
hold on me lately No, I don't know myself anymore Feels like the walls are all closing in And the devil's knocking at my door Whoa, how am I? How many times did I tell you I'm no good at being alone? Yeah, Satan's stolen me, trying my best to keep from tearing the skin off my bones. Don't you know? I lose my control when your life is in me.